While searching for unique content to react to in late 2017, Rice Gun would stumble across this bizarre video. Lil Tay, I'm richer than all y'all. I'm nine. She's I was nine. born in Atlanta, and I was broke as. Look at me now. I'm all better than you. After being featured on Rice Gum's channel, the girl in the video would identify herself as Lil Gucci Taylor and respond to Rice Gum in yet another video. He dropped a video on me, so today we be reacting to that. Spotting a consistency in her strangely hilarious attitude, people began to ask questions about her story. Was this a genuine expression of her personality, or was she being forced to say these things by another family member? The audience would eventually get the answers to each of these questions, however, in the process, would also be met with a allegations, court cases relating to the distribution of Lil Tay's money, and the complete deterioration of her family's public image. What about the millions of dollars you stole? Real mature, Chris, you're gonna act you're gonna act like you're the right Revealing one of the most tragic stories on the topic of childhood fame. After being discovered by Rice Gum, as previously mentioned, her notoriety would skyrocket. And owing to this newly found level of social media success, the degree to which she would flex her wealth slowly escalated with each and every new YouTube video. Lil Tay would also create an Instagram account where she would once again begin to post photos and videos displaying how rich she apparently was. I'm only nine years old, I ain't got no license, but I still drive this sports car. Your favorite rapper ain't even doing it like Lil Tay. Which is where her popularity would absolutely explode. Only two weeks after making her Instagram account, Lil Tay had gained 1.2 million followers with less than 10 photos. This girl, Lil Tay, has like 500,000 followers on Instagram. 700,000. She just went up by 300,000 subscribers in one day. A level of fame that granted her access to a load of other huge celebrities. Like she's hanging out with Whoa Vicky, who's just trash. That's all it is, right? Yeah. She would post photos with Chief Keef, XXXTentacion, Lil Pump, and would even appear in a video where Bad Baby was attempting to fight Wall Vicky. She's her okay, but right. yes! <laughs> All of these events continue to push Lil Tay further and further into the mainstream. Wait, who is Lil Tay? Wait, Lil no. Tay is a <laughs> nine-year-old girl uh -huh. who is famous now on the internet for showing all the money she has <laughs> and all the things she buys. <laughs> all while her apparently insane lifestyle continued to escalate. She displayed nicer and nicer cars. Lil Tay has copped a brand new Ferrari. While bragging about how she had gone from living in the hoods of Atlanta to living in the hills. When I was six years old, I lived in Atlanta and I was broke, and now we be living in the hills. See that view? Y'all don't have that view. This video about her living in the hills would go on to gain the attention of Jake Paul, who would invite her to the Team 10 mansion for an interview. Invite Lil Tay to my house, to the Team 10 mansion. Where she would answer numerous questions, including her thoughts on Rice Gum, the person who had made her famous in the first place. He is irrelevant. He's trying to get close, so he made a video on me. After noticing that Little Tay was getting involved in interviews, she would be invited onto the Zack Sang Show, where she would be asked, Does Little Tay want to change the world? I mean, I kind of already did. While once again maintaining the narrative that she was a nine-year-old millionaire. How many cars do you have now? A little over 10. Wow. <laughs> a little over 10. And how, many, how many houses? I mean, why, why are you even surprised? I'm the youngest flexor of the century. However, understandably, the audience was skeptical at best. How much of this is an act? This could be just some elaborate social experiment or prank of some sort. And I mean, come on. Of course the audience was skeptical. To have a nine-year-old acting this way saying they used to be broke when they were six, but they became a millionaire by nine had to be a total joke. To support this, a lot of the early videos felt forced and acted. As an example, when she went to meet Jake Paul, you can tell that she's trying not to laugh. Your, like, my house is like way, I mean, it's lit and all, but my house is way bigger than yours. Okay. In addition to this, you can see the cameraman and the driver of the car both smiling and laughing behind the camera. One thing was assumed by almost everyone. The whole thing was an act. But there were still so many unanswered questions. Who came up with the idea? How were her parents involved? What was the overall goal of the persona? With such a huge following and so many invested into figuring out the details behind her story, it was only going to be so long before people began to discover the truth. In May 2018, only five months into her journey as the youngest flexor of the century, Lil Tay would be exposed for who she really was. Little Tay's big brother, who's like 16 years old, is the one that is controlling her and telling her what to say. On the 23rd of May 2018, Keemstar will post a tweet stating, Lil Tay being coached what to say by her brother. Sad. Lil Tay be popping on YouTube right now. Be like more ignorant. While no one was all that surprised to see that it was an act, many were surprised to see the brother being so aggressive while coaching her. Child abuse.
Lamea, this is actually so sad. I feel bad for that little girl. Yo, this poor girl. I always had this suspicion. Others thought that the whole thing was an even deeper conspiracy, being that the video had been leaked deliberately to add more fuel to the fire. Bro, why would this be filmed? What if getting caught was all a part of the plan? Honestly, they could just be doing this now for more attention. This was leaked by Lil Tay. Y'all stupid if you guys fall for this. Whether it was deliberate or not, one thing had been established. The whole thing had been confirmed as an act with her brother involved to some extent, and the news spread like wildfire across Europe. YouTube. Surprise, surprise, Lil Tay's internet persona is fake. With Lil Tay's expose being so public, her former friend and fellow flexer, Wal Vicky, would post a video titled The Truth About Lil Tay and Wal Vicky, where she would confirm that the whole thing was being controlled by her brother. She don't know nothing about flexing. It's, it's her brother that runs her account, it's her brother that tells her what to do, and it's her brother in her ear. At this point, it was all starting to add up, especially when considering another incident where a live stream had been started on Little Tay's Instagram. However, when the volume button on the phone was accidentally pressed, the screen would disappear to reveal that it was her brother setting up the live stream. Possibly to protect the reputation of her brother, Little Tay would appear on the new show, Good Morning America, claiming that she was the one behind the character. This is my decision. I'm happy with what I'm doing. However, this interview would also reveal that Little Tay's mother was involved in the whole operation. One of the unanswered questions still up in the air at this point was, how was Little Tay getting access to so many luxury homes and cars when she was so young? Individuals like Cody Ko thought that since she was likely being controlled by some powerful media figure, they must have set them up for her. However, this wasn't the case. Little Tay's mother actually happened to be a Vancouver real estate agent and would use her luxury listings to film the videos in. Additionally, she would use her boss's luxury cars such as the Bentley and a Mercedes, which would have been fine, however she didn't have permission to do so. After noticing the videos online, Lil Tay's mother would be fired from the agency with the business stating, when we found out about this activity last week we had to dismiss her, and that the behaviour in Lil Tay's videos had no place in the real estate industry. After being exposed as a total fraud, Lil Tay had nowhere to go. The act didn't work anymore now that everyone knew that it was fake. Lil Tay would post one final Instagram post as a tribute to XXXTentacion, then wipe her Instagram clean by deleting every single post, which is where the real tragedy of Lil Tay began to come to the surface. After remaining completely silent for approximately three weeks, a story would be posted to the Lil Tay Instagram page saying nothing but the two words, help me. It had been mentioned that the deletion of every post on Lil Tay's Instagram was the result of a rebranding strategy while she had been staying with a new manager in LA. Lil Tay is currently staying at her new manager's home in Los Angeles. His name is Diomi Cordero, and he deleted all of Tay's Instagram posts because he's planning to completely rebrand her. Was this story stating help me just a new branding method to get people talking about her again? Whether or not it was a deliberate strategy aimed at stirring conspiracy theories, this is exactly what it did. Nine-year-old Instagram star Lil Tay deleted everything from Instagram and left a cryptic message. Controversial nine-year-old Instagram star sparks concern after deleting all her social media posts before sharing an eerie message saying, help me. Despite asking for help in the Instagram story, Lil Tay wouldn't provide any context, never actually specifying what it was that she needed help with. This seemed like confirmation that the help message was a publicity stunt, as a help message with no further information is completely useless to anyone reading it. However, three months later, Lil Tay would reveal the truth behind why she had posted the Help Me message. On the 22nd of October 2018, a post would show up on the Lil Tay Instagram page stating, this was Lil Tay the last time she was happy, two hours before Christopher John Hope, her abusive absentee father who hasn't been in her life for years, handed her a court order forcing her to go to his home in Canada, in which she was constantly by Hope and his wife. He banned her off of social media because he was afraid she would expose the truth to the world, the truth of what he has done and hasn't been punished for. For the past few months, he's been trying to destroy Tay and her mother's life for his own financial gain. In the three months between the Help Me message and the allegations, Lil Tay had lost more than 200,000 Instagram followers. Was ratting out her own father a desperate attempt to put her monthly follower count back in the green after realizing that a simple help me message wasn't going to cut the mustard? Alternatively, on the more conspiratorial end, what if the dad, who was possibly receiving a share from Lil Tay's fame, was a part of it the whole time and knew that the story would receive more attention if they built a narrative around how she was being a by him. Well, apparently this wasn't the case. As court documents would then be released outlining the legal battle between Lil Tay and her father, stating some of the bad things that apparently constituted a However, personally, I think some of the points just show that little Tay and her mother didn't actually have that much dirt on the father. Slammed the door on Tay's foot and broke her toenail when she was angry at Tay. Asked Tay to bake for herself and Tay's fingers got burnt. Chris Hope often made Tay watch scary movies. If you ask me, none of these really constitute a 
script and could easily be dismissed as accidents, standard childhood experiences, and overly embellished attempts at discrediting the father. Little Tay's dad would then go on and make a public statement about why he had taken Little Tay. When my daughter's social media began to go viral this year, I disagreed with most of the social media activity. I took legal steps to stop things which I felt were dangerous to her physical and mental health and to her future. The issue with this whole thing was that every situation could have easily been reinterpreted to fit Little Tay's narrative. Little Tay has no money left to pay lawyers for fighting for her freedom. Her father has stolen everything from her. Was this just a dramatic way of saying that the father has taken control over her finances because, um, hey, maybe it's not the best idea to let a nine-year-old control hundreds of thousands of dollars she likely earned during her short time in the sun? Is forcing little Tay to wear broken and ripped shoes and socks to school not just a normal thing for a parent to do? What constitutes broken and ripped? Anything more than a week old? A month old? A year old? Where's the line? When I was in school, it was a status symbol to be wearing shoes that were literally falling apart on the playground. But apparently these days, it's abuse to send little Tay to school with broken shoes. The father is a lawyer in Vancouver. He doesn't seem to be just some no-name drongo that's trying to leech off his daughter's success. However, I could be wrong with this. Perhaps with a background in law, he's using his knowledge to ensure that he's entitled to a proportion of her earnings. But from his perspective, he stated, everyone else involved in the situation is motivated by money and the possibility of making money off of my daughter. I'm not fighting about money, I'm fighting for my daughter, for her happiness and for her future. Approximately four months ago, after two and a half years of complete silence on all social media, Lil Tay's brother would return to the Instagram account, announcing the commencement of the court case between Lil Tay and her father. Five posts were uploaded, once again attempting to discredit the father and provide evidence that Little Tay had been a Accompanying the post would be a GoFundMe for Little Tay's legal defense with a goal of $150,000. However, the fund would raise only $16,000. On one of the Instagram posts, it was stated by the brother, he can say in the press, I love her and I want the best for her, but anybody can say that. However, simultaneously, to apply the same principle, anyone can say, this is not a marketing scheme. How do we know that this $16,000 went anywhere near this apparent legal case? How do we know that these videos aren't two years old and are only being uploaded now to milk the final bit of Little Tay's relevancy for money? Why did the GoFundMe start on the same day that the court case commenced. Wouldn't this mean that the lawyers were already in place? Wouldn't you have wanted the money in preparation for the court case? What evidence do you have that the court case even exists? The tragic tale of Little Tay proves one thing and one thing only. You can say whatever you want on the internet. It's so simple to frame anything in your favor by simply making it a little bit dramatic with a few basic arguments. At the end of the day, Little Tay is a character who was built on nothing but lie after lie after lie about who she really was. Why would there be any shift from lying about about who she was in every single post to suddenly telling the truth about what was happening in this court case.